suddenly. From heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. In Genesis, we read, when God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is often depicted as wind, not a chaotic wind like a tornado, but a movement that brings about newness, a wind that creates life, order out of chaos. For this group of about 120 Jesus followers, this movement of the Spirit brought them so much goodness. For one, it brought them an assurance, an assurance that Jesus' promises could be relied upon. Jesus had told them to stay in the city of Jerusalem and pray, to pray for the Holy Spirit to come. So rather than head back to their home villages after Jesus' ascension, they stayed in the big city, worshiping and praying every day. My friends, the Holy Spirit shows up when we are expecting her. Yes, the Holy Spirit has been here from the beginning of time. The Holy Spirit is here now. The Holy Spirit is always with us. But when we open ourselves to the Spirit, when our spirits are looking for God's Spirit to show up, then, wow, watch out. And I mean that in a good way. I love it that often while I'm working on a sermon, an illustration will come my way, one that fits what I am hoping to convey to you. I say it's the Holy Spirit working. And here I give you a cartoon that you probably have seen in your lifetime. There's Billy with his little brother. When you blow th through here, I can't read it there. When you blow through here, it turns your breath into music. Yes, now I imagine that the first sound that comes through that instrument, the trumpet, would only be music to parents' ears. And yet in time, music will come. And as every musician knows, it takes practice, time, interest, study, hope, perseverance. The same with experiencing the holy divine wind of God. The infilling, the flow of Holy Spirit can take time. This group of believers, the group we refer to as the early church, pray together for days. And then the fullness of God came blowing through the room where they were gathered. This first community of believers were waiting and expecting the Spirit of God while not knowing the possibilities the Spirit would bring. Yet they were expecting, expecting it because Jesus told them to wait and expect the Spirit's company. And when it came, it came as fire and a wind of power and love that enabled Peter, who if you remember, had some rough edges during his time with Jesus, but with the help of the Spirit, he was empowered to share the good news from that room's balcony. 
And on the day of Pentecost, this community of 120 Christ followers grew spiritually and numerically. Peter's quoting the prophet Joel's prophecy speaks to God's power spreading through all barriers. God's love becoming present in every part of our world, every part of our being, every part of our culture. There's an incredible story of the Holy Spirit's life-giving movement in the Old Testament book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37. It's another very long passage, and so I decided, let's just listen to the the Acts passage. But let me tell you this story. Ezekiel lived during one of the most tumultuous times of Israel. The kingdom had been split into two, and everything was going downhill. They had turned away from God. This was during the time of the Babylonian Empire that was sweeping through the ancient world, controlling everyone in its path. And instead of holding on to their trust in God to take care of them, to guide their steps, Israel went their own way, placing their faith in other ideologies. Ezekiel is a young man at this time, a priest, He's been called by God to prophesy, to speak truth to the people of Israel, but his speeches weren't welcomed. He was, in fact, like a whistleblower, pointing out where the government was failing the people. But the people did not wish to hear the truth. They did not notice the growing darkness, the ominous violence, and the fearful atmosphere. They did not see the danger in the government and the military promoting their propaganda. And so, with God's direction and help, Ezekiel stood up and blamed the religious community for their downfall. He pointed out that it was the religious community who was responsible for truth-telling, for directing their people into peace, And in his proclamation, Ezekiel proclaimed that their lies would lead to death. He forecasted their destruction. And so, after that speech, Ezekiel watched and waited. And he watched as his people came to their senses. But it seemed to be too late. Ezekiel and his people were hopeless. In their despair, they called out to God, where are you? Where is God when all was lost? Where is the peace we once knew? Where is our hope? Where is the dancing and the singing? Ezekiel is discouraged too. He and his people have lost their vitality, their purpose. But in order for prophet Ezekiel to encourage his people, he needed to be encouraged first. And so, God gives him a vision. The dry bones vision. The one the old spirituals speak of, where the toe bone connects to the foot bone and the foot bone connects to the ankle bone. You know that song, dem bones, dem bones, going to walk around. And at the end of each verse, at the end of each and in each chorus, we sing, hear the word of the Lord. In his vision, Ezekiel is brought to the edge of a dry, dry valley with dry bones, bones of his defeated people. And as he takes in this valley of bones, he feels the movement of God upon him. And he senses that life is returning to his bones once more. 
In her poem, my friend Helen O'Rombi puts it this way. This is Ezekiel speaking. I have waited days now for this movement because I can't go. I can't act. I can't speak. I can't move unless this movement, this hand moves within me. The Spirit led Ezekiel into the valley, down into the valley, down to the bones. He's overwhelmed by the vastness of dry, lifeless bones. And then the Spirit of God spoke. Son, can these bones live? There was only one answer. Lord, only you know. And God said, Speak, Ezekiel, speak, prophesy to these bones, say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And Ezekiel speaks, the Lord God says to the bones, I will lay sinews on you and will place flesh on you and cover you with skin. I will breathe my spirit in you so that you shall live and you will know that I am the Lord. And all is quiet, except there is an echo in the distance. You will know that I am the Lord. And suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones come together, the toe bone to the foot bone, and all the bones connecting. The thigh bone connecting to the hip bone, the hip bone connecting to the backbone, and the backbone connecting to the shoulder bone, as just as he has prophesied. And the sinews formed, and then the muscles on the bones, and then the skin stretched over them. But there was no breath. And then God directed Ezekiel, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy and tell the breath. God says, Come from the four winds. Come, breath. Come and breathe into these lifeless bodies. And Ezekiel prophesies, and the breath enters them, and they stood on their own feet. And Ezekiel knew that life would return to his people. The breath of life is the gift of God's Spirit. The breath of God's Spirit restores hope. The breath of God's Spirit restores our vision to bring healing and hope to those who are living in fear and despair. The breath of God renews and restores broken relationships. The breath of God builds up communities of faith, communities that give forth the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the life-giving fruits of love and joy, the welcoming gifts of gentleness and patience, kindness and peacemaking. My friends, at baptism, we pray for the Holy Spirit to be alive within you. And as we collectively allow the Spirit to work within us, amongst us, and through us, change happens. Good, wholesome change occurs. Life is restored. There's movement of the Spirit. And so let's be expecting this holy breath of God to blow through 
us, to blow through you and through me, and let's see what marvelous things will come about, even here in Green Valley. Amen.